everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice back at it again with another match reaction. And guys, if you're new to Red United TV, please remember to subscribe and make sure you smash that like button and press that bell and follow the socials as well. And this time it's Seville 2, Manchester United 1. Guys, we are out of the Europa League semi-finals. We will not be having a final today, uh, this coming Friday. We will not be through. We will not have the opportunity to taste a trophy. Only won't get that opportunity. The team won't get that opportunity because today we blew it. We blew it. Although we did well in the second half, we gave it away. It was a very good opportunity. We had plenty of opportunities, but guys, we are out. And what can we do? What can we say? It just wasn't our day today, especially the chances where we missed. But apart from that, we was awful. The defence was sleeping, especially when we conceded our second goal. But apart from that, what can we say? The season's now over for Manchester United. And we just have to move on and hope that we can sign some players. We have to, have to sign some players. The amount of chances that we missed, if we can just get some quality players, then we can score these chances, convert these chances to goals. But unfortunately, guys, we are out. Manchester United started the first half a bit, a bit with Seville dominating the first half, having the possession. And then, of course, we had a very good opportunity with Rashford being fouled. And Bruno Fernandes, once again, as you can say, Penchester United, as always. We got the opportunity to score. And Bruno Fernandes with a skip, top right, left corner, brilliant penalty. Really good to put Manchester United 1-0 up. You would think that as soon as we go up, we'll command the game. But no, in that, as soon as we went 1-0 up, we went back, sit in defence, while Sevilla was still in possession, dominating the play, which made Manchester United a bit uncomfortable. Then, which led into Sevilla finally getting the equaliser. Again, poor, poor defending. Poor defending by Brandon Williams and the rest of the guys. She just made it easy for a tap-in for Sevilla to just make it 1-1. The match finishes in the first half as 1-1. So we start the second half, guys. We look good. We was creating chances, create, um, having an attempt on the goals. Sevilla's goalkeeper being tested. Tested again and again and again. But not breaking the deadlock and just getting that second goal. It was just hard for us. Again, just like the game against Copenhagen, we just couldn't break the deadlock and just open up the team and be clinical in the final third. And because of that, a mistake with defence and once again sleeping with a goal from De Jong. Luke De Jong just scored and made this in the Seville win goal 2 1 up. A goal from Luke De Jong, which gave opportunity to, for Seville to go 2 1 up in the game. And then from there, late, late, late substitutions. Oli, once again with the late substitutions. I despise that. I do not like that, guys. I don't know what you guys think of this, but Oli makes too much late substitution when he could have made it earlier. I thought Rashford had an awful game. He should have came off a bit earlier than that. Probably roughly around in the 70th minute. But then again, I'm not Oli, but Oli made a bad decision. I don't know what you guys think about that, but let me know in the comment description if you thought that Oli should have made an earlier substitution and not in the 80th minute when we had about six minutes left, bringing on three players and just couldn't affect the game. Once again, we blew it. The match finishes 2-1. Manchester United are out. Season's done for us. I don't know what we could say about this, but it's just what we just it's, it wasn't what we wanted. We just, it wasn't the season we wanted, especially towards the end. We wanted a trophy. I felt like the team could have just finished the season with a trophy and be confident as well to, to win something together. But yet yeah, they fail at like that. They failed doing that, guys. And they let us down. The boys now can just go home and go on their holidays or take a break because now the season is done. We're just out of Europe, the last English team to be in Europe. We've let down the Premier League and now we just have to just regroup and hopefully we can sign some players. And we need it, especially to be clinical in the final third. And you saw that today, guys. We lacked chances, especially with the decision-making of Marcus Rashford. There was plenty of times he could have just scored and got um, made the right decision. But yet again, yet again, he failed us and made the wrong decision. My man of the match today has got to be Fred. 
I thought Fred did really well today, especially keep getting the ball. He was being tenacious as always. As usual, that's what Fred does all the time. Hey, he won the ball back. He kept the ball moving. He had a very good game compared to everyone else. But my don't give him match, as you know, it's got to be Marcus Rashford. Yet another poor game by Marcus Rashford. Making the wrong decisions, rash decisions as always. Rash, this, rash FC United with Marcus Rashford. I just hope that he just get the decision right once when he gets older. For a player that's got so much max experience, Marcus Rashford, yet again, you need to work on your final third, and especially when making decisions whether to cross or whether to shoot or whether to dribble the ball to go past your opponent. You need to approve on that, my brother. But yeah, I believe in you. I have faith in you, Marcus Rashford. You know that. So, all right, guys, let's go straight into the player ratings. Of course, today we had David De Gea in goal. David De Gea, he did his best today. Although he could consider two goals, none of those goals were his fault. So, I have to give him a six today. And then we have Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Spider one, plenty of times he just dived in. Although he did great today, I'm going to have to give him a, a six and a half. Victor Lindelof. Vindelof today because we conceded two goals. You're sloppy. Same as Aaron Van Cycle making mistakes and just sleeping. I'm gonna have to give you a six today, my brother. Because you wasn't that good. And Harry Maguire, the captain. I don't think he was that great today. He wasn't at his best. I'm gonna have to give him a six and a half too. And Brandon Williams, young Brandon Williams, had an okay game. It's plenty of opportunities where he could have gone forward, but made the wrong decisions did get booked as well which made it a bit difficult for him but him today i'm gonna have to give him a six and a half too and then we're gonna have to move it up straight to fred my man in the match today fred was everywhere today he was a player that really impressed me today especially as one of the midfielders today in the in the front three i mean in the middle three but he did well he, he played a full 90 minutes today he didn't get subbed off but I'm just glad that he had a good game. I'm going to have to give him a 7 today because he was my man in the match and he did really well. With Paul Popper, Labile was involved in, in certain aspects. Did give the ball away a couple of times. But my boy Labile, I'm going to have to give him a 6.5 today. Bruno Fernandes, the guy who scored our penalty today to give us the chance to go 1-0 up. You, my brother, today, I'm going to have to give you a six and a half today. You wasn't at your best, but again, yes, again, you prove when we need you in crucial moments. You show up, you turn up, and that's why we love you, Bruno. Mason Greenwood, he had a decent game. He was effective in some certain aspect of the game, especially in the final third. Well, with him again today, I'm going to have to give him a six and a half. And then we have Marcus Rashford. My dog here of the match especially had one of the poor games, another poor game today. Consecutively, poor games in a row. That needs to just put Oli in alarm, just needs to ring in alarm bells. And there was a moment at the uh, time where the commentators were saying that Mark Rashford done a brilliant piece of skill, which I thought was garbage. Didn't go nowhere. He actually lost the ball. I, I, I've got to say, these English pundits, they're just biased. They're really biased because I, it was horrible. There was no, nothing beautiful about that. I just don't know what they were thinking or what glasses they were wearing or what they were smoking. What's wrong with them? So you, my brother, I'm going to have to give you a five today. And Anthony Marshall, as well, did good at certain aspects, but really wasn't really in that much into the game. Maybe because we couldn't find him, we couldn't feed him or give him opportunities. He did miss a chance as well. I'm going to have to give him a six and a half today as well. And with our manager, the manager rating, Oli, today he was poor. He wasn't really involved with the team. At times he sat back and sat down. I wanted him to be at the touchline to instruct his philosophy because at the same time, what is your philosophy, big man? Like, I don't know. Is it counter-attacking football? Is it defensive? Do you want to play attacking football? Because at the same time, you're not holding the ball together. The coaching isn't right. There's just something not right at Manchester United. But today, I'm going to have to give him a five as well because he was poor. He was poor. So now just wrapping it up because today is the last game of our season. The season is done for us. We're just hoping that we can sign some players 
quality players that just slot straight into the first team. We're hoping that we can sign Jaden Sancho because we really need him. You guys can see that. You can see we need Jaden Sancho and another midfielder to just relieve Bruno Fernandes or Paul Pogba of pressure. Someone as creative as them to just come on and just add more creativity to our team. It's going to be a long, long summer in terms of transfer window because I'm hoping that Ed Woodward will just do something. Right now, as expected, Ed Woodward's probably on holiday, chilling, not taking things serious as well, especially when it comes to just making transfers happen. It's just ironic that it keeps happening to have, happen to have his holidays during transfer windows. These are the times you don't have your annual leaves. You don't take annual leaves during transfer windows, bro. You're at home. You make sure you're in your, you're in your office. Your hands are on that phone, calling people, emailing people. Because that's what a real, real CEO does. But then again, you can hire someone. Then you can go on holiday. Then it makes sense. But at the world, I don't know what goes, runs into your mind. So no one else can explain what goes into your mind. We heard that you're deluded. You're drunk with power. But let's just hope that you can do well this summer. Because it's crucial. It's a crucial summer. It's a crucial transfer window. Because that will just let us know where we can just elevate into the next level and take take our football to the next level and guys before we go please make sure you subscribe and smash that like button subscribe to reg united and guys remember when it comes to your food catering make sure you get down with mmk delights serving every event such as weddings parties baptisms Whatever, if it's a funeral, you got to know MMK Delights will be at your service. Remember, if you're into African cuisine, such in the areas of Nigeria and Sierra Leone, we make sure you get down with MMK Delights. You don't know, food is scrumptious, delightful. Ah, mind-blowing, guys. The other day, I had some good, good, good fish bowls. I... I thought it was fish cake, but I'm not gonna lie. It was whew, out of this world. It was out of this world. And the chef, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Remember, guys, to get down with MMK Delights. And remember, guys, to keep it united and keep it reunited. I am out. We got some more coming up. Peace out.